Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to easily number event tickets or raffle tickets on both ends, or for that matter in multiple locations, but for the uh, for the purpose of this video we're going to do both ends for like if you're doing a raffle ticket with a stub. So in this instance the desktop publishing software I'm going to use is uh, Adobe InDesign. Now as you can see I've already laid out a sheet of paper 8.5 by 11 and I've already created a raffle ticket. Now you can create this raffle ticket in the desktop publishing program that you're using. I created this in Photoshop, I saved it as a JPEG and now I'm going to lay it out on my sheet of paper in InDesign. So I have a rectangle frame the size of the raffle ticket that I've created which is two inches by five and a half, as you, as you can see right up here. Now we can easily just copy and then paste this again and then position it. Or to show you how to easily do this using the text frame, we can create a text frame. We're going to go back up here to the, to the top. We're going to resize this to five and a half inches by two and we're going to move this into place then we're going to place and then look for the as our raffle ticket And there it is. Now once we already have it placed into a rectangle frame, we can just copy and then paste. And that'll we'll copy and paste the whole entire thing. Now we're just I'm just gonna do this for five total times. So I will have five laid out to a sheet here in InDesign. Now I'm gonna go over to Number Pro. I've signed into the members area and I am going to create the data file that I need to create my number in. So in this example, let's say I'm wanting to number 100 raffle tickets. I want to start my number with number one. My ending number would be 100. The number of spots is going to pertain to how many zeros I want. So if I want my starting number when it's printed to actually be 001, I would put three. If I left that at 1, then my starting number would be just 1, then 10 would be 1, 0, and then 100 would be 1, 0, 0. It's up to you. Repeating amount. Repeating amount only pertains to NCR paper. If you're in the printing business, you know what NCR paper is. Otherwise, this would be left at 1. If you're using NCR paper, then it would be the number of copies, so either two-part, three-part, or four-part. But for most purposes, it's going to be left at one. Document repeats is going to be how many individual documents we have laid out on a sheet of paper. In the instance we just did, I have five raffle tickets laid out, so that will be five. Prefix can be anything you want before the number. Uh, it could be left blank. In my case, I'm going to put the prefix NO period and then space. Now down here at the bottom, you have a choice by default to leave it stackable. This means once these are printed, number one will be on the top page, number two will be underneath that on the second page, and number three underneath that, so on and so forth. That way, if you're using a heavy duty, or cut, heavy duty cutter, once you cut them, they will be stacked in order. Now, if you just want 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on the top page, then 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, so on and so forth on the second page, then you can uncheck that. But I'm going to leave it as is right here. I'm going to click Generate. And then it's going to ask me where I want to save that file. I am going to name this file just so I can find it easily 1 100. And then uh, let's 
let's do it 1-105 one, one up. Let's do that. Okay, I'm going to hit save. Obviously, I already had a file named that, but we'll go ahead and override that. Now, we're going to go back into our desktop publishing software in this instance. Now is where we're going to create the input boxes for our numbering. So I'm going to come over here creating the type tool. Now I'm going to create a frame two inches wide Oops, excuse me here. There we go. Click on my frame, rather. Two inches wide by 2.5. Click on the box again and it will change. Now I'm going to click on my type tool click inside the box and this is where I can change how I want my text to appear. So I'm going to center it inside the box. For this purpose I'm going to change my color to red. My font I'm going to leave at 12 and Minion Pro is fine for this example. Now I want to create numbering on both ends on that end and then over this end on each individual ticket. So, I, But I want these numbers to be sideways. So in InDesign I'm going to click on my Select tool, click on my box again, and now I'm going to use this Rotate 90 degrees. And then I'm going to position it exactly where I want it on the ticket. All I'm going to do from here is copy and paste again. So I'm going to create enough boxes to go on each end of these tickets. And I'm going to position them where I think I want them. And I'm going to go ahead and pause the video so you don't have to watch me do this over and over. And I'll be right back. Okay, i got one more to go. And there we have it. Okay, we have our text boxes on both ends of our tickets right here in the middle is where a perforation is going to, or not in the middle actually, but off to the side, is where a perforation will be. So that we'll have a stub and then the main part of the ticket. Now for the fun part of the numbering. In InDesign, you would click Window, Utilities, and Data Merge. That should open up your Data Merge window. which will look just like this. Now we want to click right here on the upper right hand little box and select data source. Now this is going to be where we saved that number profile we created just a moment ago. And I believe that was 1 to 105 up. We're going to open that file. Great. Now it's created our five positions because we had five documents laid out. So all we're going to do here is we're going to highlight one of these boxes and click the ticket number that corresponds. So it's going to be number one. This one's number two three, four, and five. Same way on this end, this is going to be number one, and make sure that number one matches number one, number two matches number two, we're going to go all the way down and finish this.
Now, it looks like these boxes may be just a little bit too close to the inside of the ticket, so I'm just going to hold down my shift key, click these on Windows, and move these off to the side just a little bit. There we go. And there we have it. We have the setup to be numbered on both ends, corresponding numbers. Now, to finish this up, we're going to click right down here in the bottom right hand corner, Create Merged Document. We're going to click OK and let it do its work. Click OK, and as you see, we've created a new untitled document. And we have number 001, number 001, and we used the stackable version, so we would have to scroll down and close these out. We'll scroll down to the next page, and there's number two, and number three. We scroll all the way down, you'll see that we end at number 100. Now, if we had unchecked the stackable, what would have happened is we would have had number one, number two, number three, so on and so forth on the, on the top page. But this is a, a very simple, uh, quick explanation on how to number both ends of a ticket using Number Pro and a desktop publishing software. In this instance, we used InDesign. The concept is the same in any desktop publishing software that allows data merge. We could have done this in Publisher, in Microsoft Word, or, or Corel Draw. We would have just created the text boxes, placed our placeholders in there, and then created the merge. I hope this helps, and thanks for watching.